Good morning, Soul Circle. <laughs> I'm Candace. And I'm Steven. And we are from Arcana Mind Body Spirit, located in Toronto, Canada. We are so, so, so excited to be here today. This is actually the seventh video in our chakras now for our morning series we've been doing. So now we've covered all of the Reiki Gokai. Now, we this, today will be our seventh of the chakras. So we're making our way through what we had planned for our June material. It's all very exciting. We want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all of you who have been joining in each morning to come see us. People who have been leaving us comments and messages on our uh, YouTube, on our Instagram, on our Facebook. And um, we're getting a lot of questions about different services that we have to offer. Um, some really popular ones have been our Life Path coaching session and uh, a virtual tarot reading. We do those. And even some uh, virtual Reiki, distance Reiki healing. There's been a lot of requests for it. So thank you guys. Our whole uh, goal for this month is to work on high vibrational living. And the more that we live intentionally, the more that we wake up with purpose, the more that we put our body temple first in our lives, the better that we are going to feel. Because at the end of the day, we can't help anyone else if we are in struggle. So... <laughs> Today we are going to be talking about our crown chakra. Now, if you haven't had a chance, head on over to YouTube and check out our crown chakra video. We loved doing this one. It was a really, really uh, powerful video for us because we talked about some big questions because the crown chakra deals with a lot of spirituality and our divine connection. So, this is your symbol for the crown chakra. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But Candace, why don't you take it away? Give us some crown information. Sure. Okay. So we've made it to the crown chakra. Um, so I'm excited to put this all together. I, I um, made a few notes yesterday. Uh, I've got a busy day today, so I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything that I wanted to say. Um, I think once we put everything together, Stephen, it's going to be really, really effective and amazing. Um, and I was thinking we should do some sort of like maybe of the month, or we could do something really. So maybe we could talk about that and figure out, figure something out. Um, but anyways, I just think it would be really, really great to actually be able to. Um, measure the results. There's my behavioral science. Let's collect yeah. the data <laughs> and let's see. <laughs> let's see what we get. Yeah. Let's, 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 we know our baseline, and then now let's implement. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. So uh, the crapper is located at the crown of your head. Gave it away in the name. Um, and it's considered to be the bridge to the cosmos. Um, in other words, this one is your most spiritual of the chakras. Um, it connects us to the oneness of all things, um, how we interact and communicate with the universe through our senses, our inspirations, our devotion, and how we do so on a, on a deeper level with our higher self and um, the upper realms, if you will, um, such as divine spirit. So whatever that that means to you or for you, the the crown chakra is at the um, it's at the center of uh, your spirituality um, and maintaining a healthy relationship and connection to that part of you. So the crown chakras um, the crown chakra is actually considered a masculine energy uh, as you saw the symbol that Stephen put up. It's represented by the color violet. Um, it's also represented by the color white. Um, the symbol is a, th a thousand petals. Um, on the circle there and it's associated with silence and the mantra i know so um some things to think about when
this. Uh, um, it also is related to stagnant energy, uh, feeling a lack of purpose, boredom, um, but also like, but also at the same time feeling antsy. So um, you can also uh, think about like if you have any signs of depression, um, feeling very um, skeptical, so skepticism, um, excessive stubbornness. Um, they're all hands that you're possibly um, need to spend some time getting in flow with this chakra. Uh, great ways to work on this one. Uh, one of the number one ways is going to be meditation. So you want to watch your mind. Um, try not to control the thoughts, but allow the thoughts to come and just be there without judgment and just let them pass through, right? Our thoughts don't have any power that we don't give them. So, um, yeah, just you're just trying to find that stillness. Really, really, really hard. Um, I know sometimes I have a hard time finding that quiet place. Um, so this is a great opportunity to use some sound tools, um, anything based around vibrations. Um, yeah, because I know I, I'm like short on time and I feel like when I try to sit, uh, I, I just can't focus on it. I'm only focusing on uh, the time that I have. So therefore using a vibration or the, using the Bija mantra for this chakra, um, any kind of chanting can be really effective in dropping in um, for people like myself or other people. Yoga is a great way. I know headstands and inverted poses can um, really help activate the chakra. But if that's not something you're interested in doing, lay down or sit comfortably and find that silence within focusing on the color violet or um, even picturing the color or light flowing through the top of your head so just do what feels good for your body another thing you can do is fast so there's not um a, a special food necessarily that you would eat for this chakra that can help activate this but this one is actually um, a really good way to activate it is to fast and give your body a break from the physical de demands of um, digestion and stuff and let it heal and let it give time to just focus on that spiritual connection. Uh, but again, do what's healthy for you. Do what's possibly maybe just thing you know, um, short visit, um, we did a 10 hour day fast and I found it to be very effective. Other things for the chakra, aromatherapy, um, lavender, jasmine, cedarwood, frankincense and myrrh, um, sandalwood, they're all uh, really good. Crystals for this one, uh, clear quartz, um, an amethyst, yeah. um, selenite. I don't know what else you have there, Steve, but- um, Go to's, I always- Clear, quart clear quartz and um, selenite. Those are my go-tos for this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I'd say that some last thoughts that I that I wanted that I wrote down that I'm gonna just kind of um, glance at here. Um, all of our chakras are important and interconnected. Remember, um, you might find that some are um, far more in flow than others, and of course that's okay but anything worth it is worth the journey. So find and connect, finding and connecting to a source greater than yourself always allows a certain level of purpose, inspiration, and childlike wonderment. Uh, we then find ourselves connecting to the, to the world and the people in a place of understanding, acceptance, unity, peace, and love. What a sweet spot that is and what a beautiful way to navigate all our relationships in this universe. That is the sweetness of living a high vibrational life. The affirmation I came up with um, while I was uh, thinking about this last night, high vibe life. <laughs> um, this is my affirmation. I honor the divine within and allow peace, wisdom, purpose, and the guidance of something greater than myself to lead me through this life. I am connected to the universe. The universe is connected to me. 
So that's a wrap. Again, we could go into a lot of detail in our other videos. So if you want to know more, if you want to dive into a deeper conversation, please check out our other um, video on the crown chakra, which you can find on YouTube. conversation. Uh, I know this upper chakras are something I was personally working on this year. So um, yeah, I hope that was a sweet little quickie with the crown chakra. <laughs> so cool. Steven, what are we what are we doing today? <laughs> well, what we do for this is um, it's actually very simple. For working with your crown, one of the best things to do is sort of like you were saying, to fast, find stillness. So all we're going to do is we're just going to sit in our body space for a few minutes together. Um, we're just going to, uh, if you have trouble with meditation or maybe you don't regularly meditate, maybe this is brand new for you. Uh, some of the basics are you want to align your central channel so that as you breathe, you have a nice flow all the way from your root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. There's so many different things you can do with your hands. Um, if you don't know what to do, just place them on your, on your legs so that you're sitting up nice and comfortably. Start by taking a few deep breaths. And one of the easiest ways to get started with meditation is to close your eyes and just imagine in front of you is a big blank screen. And then from there, allow your thoughts to just naturally cycle from what, one thing to the next. Don't try to control it. Just allow yourself to be in flow because at the end of the day, when we're working with our crown chakra, what we're really talking about is being in flow and having faith that you are connected to everything that is around you, that you do believe that there is some form of higher guidance, of higher source, of higher energy. A lot of the times, this is the least developed chakra and some people go their entire life without acknowledging this chakra. Uh, and even in the grand scheme of things, they say that this chakra doesn't fully develop until you're about 50 or 60 years old for most people. Um, because you get to that point in life where you have more perspective on what is taking place around you. So, sitting up nice and tall, just taking a few deep breaths. Allowing whatever thoughts come forward to you to present themselves. Imagining the bright white light or purple color. Your Bija mantra for the crown chakra is Om. So most people know or have heard of the word Om. Take a deep breath and exhale. Om. 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 I could sit in that space for a long time. Mm. <laughs> Same. Mm. Ah, so good. Well, um, that's your crown chakra, folks. For today, there is something that is long awaited happening in astrology today. Super excited about it. And that mm -hmm. is, drum roll, Mercury is going direct. <laughs> Mercury goes direct <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, so Mercury going direct. As we go direct with Mercury, there's some things that you're going to notice that change. Um, a lot of times on the last few days of Mercury, you're going to have tech problems you've never had before. You're not going to be able to get a hold of anyone. You're not going to be able to see eye to eye. There's going to be miscommunication. There's going to be all kinds of things that take place. Um, but as you move forward out of a retrograde, you always want to think about what the medicine of what that retrograde was. What did it teach you? And a lot of times people hate retrograde, right? They're like, oh, it's a terrible time. It's going to be about, I'm not, it's going to be difficult. I'm going to be emotional and my exes are going to show back up and I'm going to end up with bangs and all these horrible things that people think take place <laughs> in Mercury and retrograde. <laughs> So, <laughs> am I giving opinions? Um, so, when it comes to retrograde, you basically just want to go inside. That's usually the best thing to do. If you spend all of direct time experiencing the world, you want to spend any um, retrograde looking inside and you're on your internal world. So, what did you learn about communication with yourself over the last... Uh, five to six weeks of Mercury retrograde. These are always good questions that as you move forward into direct, what, how do you um, use this medicine? How do you assimilate it? How do you integrate it into your life? All right. Now, because we are talking about integration and knowledge and, of course, the crown chakra, our guide for today is the High Priestess. She is all about illumination, knowledge. She has all of the answers usually there's like i love different depictions of her on cards a lot of the time she's depicted as either like mother gaia holding her her stomach or um there's just so many beautiful connection with root systems and trees all the knowledge is within you and um by illuminating your crown chakra sometimes answers will come to you and you won't really know why but having that faith is what this chakra is all about so for tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our information that we have been putting together for our chakras specifically, and we're going to do that tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we're going to integrate it into our Gokai for Reiki. So this is going to be really great. Is there anything you'd like to finish with there, Candice? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just really excited to put everything together tomorrow. I think it's going to be really great. And... Um, yeah, I love that card. That's one of my favorite cards in the tarot. I love, love, love it. And um, I hope that everyone can find that connection. I know that it's different for everyone when you're thinking about um, spirituality and those kinds of things. It can be a uh, can be kind of a hot topic maybe sometimes, um, or it can be a journey just kind of figuring out what that belief system is yeah. and uh as we are here at our crown chakra um the help to getting the messages and understanding what that means for you is starting from the root and working your way up so <laughs> if you're uh need somewhere to start i would start there and uh just get in flow and flow all the way up and um i think you'll find the path that's best fit for yourself I 100% agree with that. No beautiful flowers have ever been grown without deep roots. Yeah. And with that, we shall say goodbye, and we'll see you all tomorrow.